All right, I'm going to open the meeting up and turn it over to Kayla. Yeah, we're going to jump right into uh, an update on design. We want to <coughs> keep things moving. So, and then we want to talk about a schedule update in, in terms of you know marketing the project, that sort of thing. So, okay. so we'll okay. jump into to design first. Hi. So we're diligently working on design development, which uh, we're will be wrapped up a week from Friday going to the estimators for uh, design development estimate, which is a big one. Uh, find out where we're at. So um, what I've done is I've, uh, we've updated the exterior model of the building. Uh, I'll show you the um, final drawings and three dimensions that we have. Then um, we'll run through the floor plan issues that we talked about last time when the chief wasn't here. Um, Mark did an outstanding job. Uh, Mark, yeah, Heidi was here talking about uh, a lot of the um, uh, interior elements last time. And then um, I'd like to set up a meeting uh, during the week sometime just to um, go over furnishings and things like that so we make sure that we got everything covered in the bid coming up. So. And set that meeting up with whoever wants to be there during the day. It's more okay. productive in that kind of environment. Yep. Okay. Um, so um, this first view is the updated elevation, uh, the front elevation and perspective, um, with the colors that we had uh, settled on. Um, not much new here. The uh, the uh, brick pilasters are now drawing where the actual materials are going to be made out of. Uh, you can see that the storefront is now developed um, in the entry portico. This is a view we took if you were coming in um, off of Memorial Drive um, to give you an idea of one of the main uh, design concepts that we carried through from the beginning was how to address the building turning the corner because this building is on a corner and isn't just viewed from the front as if on a street. So this here really illustrates that idea. You can see the portico that really denotes a strong entry. So, um, you know, one of the things I've noticed about police station design currently is that um, I think uh, sometimes the, the trend is a little too residential. I wanted to give it a little bit of that public monumental look, which we've done with these pilasters what you're engaged in the building, turn the corner, and then some larger ones for the portico that comes out. So this is that entry view. Uh, this also shows you uh, how in the back, we got go up to two stories. At This is the uh, drive-through sally port, <coughs> the shortened retaining wall. So now you can see how the slope just comes down. And uh, we're just retaining the earth up here where you drive in. And I'll show you how we shortened it on the other side also. Um, this would all be um, hardy board, clapboard siding uh, with hardy, hardy board trim. Um, and then, any questions on this slide? Turning the pilasters to, you know, I'm sure you have it on the other side too, the left and right side, really helps um, blend the back end with the front. And address that corner. Yeah, it looks really good. Okay, thank you. So here's a view looking southwest. Uh, we refine the carport now. It's uh, a utilitarian structure. It's uh, simply on six piers, wide flanged steel girders with some open bar joists. Um, the, uh, we've designed the building, and um, I'll show you this on a closer view. Uh, there's no gutters. We're designing basically gutters on the ground. It's stone beds with drainage pipes in there. So the water falls and then gets handed on the ground, handled on the ground. Um, almost all the entries, the water is shed away from them. Uh, it would only be on the overhang, which, uh, let's see if, just the applied overhang here, which believe it or not, this comes out four feet. It's pretty broad, that we have some diverters so that it wouldn't be dripping on anybody's head when they're coming out of those doors. So you can see here the four shortened retaining wall, and actually I, I've shortened this to there since I've even upgraded this model. Uh, the optional outbuilding 
we're still developing that as a separated cost, so we can make um, a decision on that, whether it, that and bringing those functions. <coughs> So uh, I'm still carrying through this outbuilding. This, this will get eliminated if all this pricing seems to come together, uh, doing these functions on the second floor. You can see the uh, how we turn the corner on this side too. You, this road's foreshortened in this view, but here's Chase and Memorial. So you can <coughs> see how we really address that corner so you get that three-dimensional view, whenever, uh, no matter which side of the building you're on or which street. Here's a view looking southeast. So you can see uh, the building here again. Um, this is gone. Sorry about that. I don't know how that carried through on this view. This is gone. So now this is really our only entry, which will be completely separated from the patrol entry. So patrol enters in and out here. They come behind here. Uh, here's the uh, cruiser port and employee and cruiser parking out over here and the drive through Sally Port, which comes around through there, and you can see the retained area up there. <coughs> this view is looking northwest. This shows the south face of the building. Here you can see that upper level where you can drive in to the uh, auxiliary base. Up top, down below, you can get a real good view of the cruiser port. You can see a few patrol cars in there if you look real close uh, this is where the solar panels would go uh, on this big broad south facing slope over here in the back you're and just you're just designing it the solar panels right we're not including them we're not including them there'd be an option but we're designing the structure and everything else to take it um, and um, so this really shows that utility area where patrol could come in park in the cruiser port or park here and then go in their back entry, which is all covered from the port in, and there's a drive through Sally Port in this view. Uh, flag pole area with a garden that then makes a pedestrian connection to Memorial Park, which would be over here. Helicopter would be right about there. So here's the first floor plan, the ground level plan. Uh, the, the, the changes that we talked about last time is um, we redid the detention area a little bit. We cleaned it up, made it more efficient. And now uh, we've moved the holding over to here. So a prisoner could be brought in. And um, everything really is set up now. So if uh, you'd like, you could do all the booking without leaving right here, right? Except for the prints on the photographs. Exactly, which um, was setting this wall up here um, where you could photograph them and cuff them to the wall over there. Here's a counter with a sink um, over in this area. So that was the main issue over here that we went over last time. So it became much cleaner. Uh, prisoner into the holding right here and then prisoner out there. Um, the detox is over here. Man trap over here. And um, everything stayed the same except we made all this area more efficient. Got more space for the, we didn't change the overall size of the building, but we got more space for the evidence storage uh, over in that area, uh, in this area right here, which is now all <coughs> evidence storage over here. Other than that, you know, we're just developing further, you know, locating outlets and gun cabinets and uh, developing it that way. Um, here's the optional cr cruiser port. You can see it designed by six columns over here. Um, the line of the pavement's about here. So then this would be sidewalk. You get out of the, you get out of your um, cruiser and walk the sidewalk and then into the building under cover over here. Um, these walls here are designed all as retaining walls because this is the high ground. Um, so these would be concrete. The rest is built all the concrete block in the Sally Port area and it's got a precast concrete floor. Any questions on this slide? The attic level. 
So anything out of the hatched area, you know, we, we got a big light over there. So try to overpower that. But can you see the line of the hatch? Anything outside the line of that hatch is full height space. And then from there over is sloping. So it's sloping from eight to zero, eight feet to zero here. Um, so um, we, we're designing this floor at 100 pounds per square foot. Storage everywhere. I thought I should that off. You want updates on the game, right? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like somebody else wants updates. Uh, the other change since the floor plan was seen last is uh, we made an ammunition storage room up here where you could bring the ammo in up from the high area and store it up in here, two hour rated. And um, here's the stairway. This is where the future elevator would come up if we could put it in. Uh, female locker, male locker in here. Uh, archive storage and um, physical training room over here. And here's all that auxiliary area that would relate to the higher grade. So the um, only thing really different is the ammunition storage, and this is just developed to a higher level. This is all the IT area here, an IT area workroom over in there. You, you looked at the floor structure underneath the, the ammunition storage, right? You were, you were going to look into that to see if there was... Yeah, so Any the, issues with storing weight there? Yes, the, the beauty of the plan is that, uh, uh, yes we did. Uh, you can see the column line here and there. Yeah. So wherever we want, we can just tighten up the spacing of the joists, the relatively short spans. So we have a lot of structure, so that, that's what we'll do over there. But it is, the whole area is designed for 125 pounds per square foot, which is a heavy load. Reflected ceiling plan. The only thing to look at here, you can see the typical two by two grid. Um, we're going to do some nice trade effects in the lobby where you come in here, and another nice trade effect uh, in the meeting room over there, and also in the conference room over in the admin. Other than that, will be a two by two grid with LED lighting. And what's the typical height carried throughout? Um, I got a section, we'll flip to that and I'll show you. is a reflected ceiling for uh, uh, attic level. Here's a roof plan. So you can see the optional cruiser port over here. It has a single slope roof going this way, which again will draw, drain into one of the stone beds and then be handled on the grade. It's a fairly simple roof plan this big broad gable slopes down this way and that way and the sally port a south wing connects over here and that's uh, you know this is all a two height space which gets you right into the attic area um, then you just have uh, basically four gables that spin off the big roof here's the two that turn the corner one here in admin one here in meeting uh, another one over here by the um, uh, detectives in patrol and at the front water cooler over here. Here's a broad section that just gives you um, a broad overview of the construction. It's a uh, slab on grade at the ground level with isolated footings on the interior and a simple frost wall on the exterior. Two by six wall framing uh, with Structural bays. Every every bubble is a structural bay. Very simple. Stru very simple structurally. All the f all the structure runs the long way this way. These are wood eye joists, 14 inches deep for the second floor, and two by 12 rafters that bear at all these points uh, going up. And um, the roof is a five pitch. Um, So here's, here's that section. Let's see if we can zoom in all the way. Just give you all those dimensions. We'll zoom in a little. Here we go. 
so here's our basic construction. Uh, all the insulation is rigid exterior. So you're going to have continuous uh, insulation, on the uh, unbroken. All the overhangs are applied, no rafters continue through. The whole building just gets wrapped in continuous foam here. And then over that is that rain screen that we talked about maybe three meetings ago. So over the insulation gets wood strapping, and then the clapboard is fastened to the wood strapping. So anything driven behind just hits the back or runs down and gets out. It also uh, creates a, um, a negative pressure or, or a balance of pressure so that the wind can't drive anything through the wall because uh, the flow of air behind it. Um, the window header height is nine foot two, typical to the top of the transoms. Uh, the drop foot seal, the drop acoustical ceiling is, is typically at nine foot four, and uh, top of slab to top of double double plate is twelve foot six. That's based on a twelve foot stud with a double shoe and a double plate. So twelve feet plus three plus three equal to twelve six. Then from concrete floor slab to uh, second floor wood subfloor is 13 8 and 3 quarters. Uh, this is someone just under 6 feet to give you some scale as standing in that ceiling height and where somebody's eye level would relate to the transom and where the window and the transom comes together and the height of the window. So I'll just give you some scale that way. Any questions? You can see what I was talking about here. So here's a continuous wall insulation, then the continuous roof insulation. It's right down and the two meet. So wrap and continuous. Here's a section through Sally Port and detention area. Goes to concrete block structure, but the rain screen remains the same. So over the concrete block will be the rigid insulation, the strapping, or the ferry, and then the clapboard. All the petitions inside the detention Sally Port are all in CMU. The, the floors in, in the south wing, which encompasses detention in Sally Port, <coughs> is um, precast concrete plank with a two-inch topping on the top. Um, the, this is the detention area, which would be, um, this would carry through at the same height as the main building, but then we jump up two feet in the sally port. That's to make for the high bays we need for an ambulance and everything else. This is just showing, this is that retaining wall that we have to design for that, um, what would that be, the south wall of the Sally Port area that's going to retain all that earth. So you're just going to do that poured concrete? Poured concrete. And what I did, what we did is, um, uh, the wall that runs through the kennels and the storage area that are perpendicular to this, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm designing those as um, wing walls or dead men so that it's going to reduce the size of our footing. It's going to be able to, you, could, you can backfill it fully without having to brace it, build separate braces, or wait till the floors are. So that will help with elevation. So it's going to, we'll just pour those perpendicular walls out of concrete also. They'll divide the kennel and the two storage areas in that sally port area. What are you going to put exterior to this on the uh, concrete wall that's subterranean? Are you putting foam, yeah. foam back or still? Yes. We'll, we'll be able are you to just off. backfill right up to the foam, or are you going to put something between the two? Um, we're going to backfill to the foam, but in between the foam and the wall, we're going to put a waterproof membrane. Just put it on that side. And that'll be closed foam. So these are the elevations all caught up. Um, it's better that we look at them in 3D like we already did, but this can just show you the simple cruiser port structure that connects into the building over here. Um, here's a drive through sally port coming over here. This would be the dog kennel. Um, this is that high ground where the retaining wall is and uh, the pilaster and entry column layout. It looks so big, <laughs> doesn't it? <laughs> Not here, but here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. 
And here's just the other view. Here's a cutaway at that high ground, the two doors into the auxiliary storage area. That's just a pilastic detail with all the actual materials we're going to be using. Uh, this is a product called Ariscraft. Uh, so um, all right out of the catalog, with custom caps and bases. And that'd be about it. We're just progressing with design development. We took all that interior information that we collected uh, between last building committee meeting and the two visits before that. Yeah. One question I had. Yes. You're changing your drainage from the roof into um, subterranean drain. You're not going into the four bays all. We didn't discuss that at all. But originally you're, you were going to dump it into your drainage. Is that why you're getting rid of the gutters? So you can re reduce that size? It, 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 yeah, that's one of the reasons. The, yes, and the fact that gutters stink for a lot of reasons, especially around these pines and everything else. So, yes, and other reasons also. Have you redesigned that drainage yet? Have you done those uh, calcs? They're close. Okay. The, uh, they've. Um, I'm sure they've gotten smaller. Yes, and um, uh, you know he's currently working on them, and um, <coughs> they're going to be preliminary. They're going to be ready for our review on Tuesday, okay. in, in light of the next Friday's deadline. Right. And I assume some of that drainage that you have in the stone will might even feed into the bio area still, or is it just completely leaching? Oh no, this we we run a pipe through that goes okay. out to there. That's so it will be that. some leaching and, okay. and and when it gets up to the level of the perforated pipe, then it will go. Yeah. You're gonna set the whole thing up like a French drain basically? Yes. Exactly. Yep. Any other questions? Your arms look good. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, it's going good. I think one one of the things let me back up. The radio guide made a visit to speak with the fire chief and I. Talked about two things, the serious problems we have on the west side community. But he also talked about uh, the police station and the, the preliminary budget for radio equipment, mm -hmm. et cetera. And he thought that we, we, we would be in the ballpark. Um, but he also talked about a tower, a radio tower. I was going to ask you if you, yeah. I don't know if you're familiar with the history of this one, but it was brought up from the old yes. town hall. Like that that. So, um, so you got to think as to where you're going to situate the tower. Obviously, the higher the ground, the better. Right? Um, and you also have to consider how you're going to connect conduit and, and other things to the tower itself. In some cases, they run it by you know, overhead. Cable track. Runs. Other cases, right? Um, I would think it would probably be uh, up around the back somehow, the higher ground. Okay, let's go to that three degree. I think yeah. yeah, we actually have a probably a pretty good opportunity by that um, storage unit. Yeah. Yeah, we we can drive the car in because um, the biggest thing you want to avoid with your cabling um, when it comes to a tower, the most expensive part is the cable. Believe it or not, it's not the structure. So, are you somewhere up in here? Yeah, you like to get your as close to the building as you can. From here. Ex exactly. Yeah, and your right IT here. room is up there. Um, Go a little to the right, maybe like right in, right over there somewhere. Right in there. Yeah. yeah. Here's the other thing I noticed when we went to a cushion. <laughs> <laughs> Did you notice what was on the ground right below the tower? A lot of white droppings. Birds. Oh, yeah, the birds. Because the birds just well, stay yeah. in there. So you were walking, your path took you through this to get oh. into the back door of the police station. So we we would want to consider that, you know. <laughs> this would be a great place for it because, you know, to have a nice solid base that you can drive up to to service it or work on our ass great, which would be right here and it's out of everybody's way. And this is the high point right here. I would think they would want the power as close to the building as possible because at those frequencies, the longer the coax run, the more loss you have it. Definitely. In the signal. Yeah. So right here. And then right in. Right into and right, right into the, the IT yeah. rooms right here. Yeah. 
So I'll, I've been tr trying to reconnect with uh, Chick on, on his last visit here, so um, I want to find out too. Once he's done with his study, he'll tell us if we need a tower or not. You know, yeah, and the way he was talking. Uh, I think we're probably heading towards one. <clears throat> um, but you know, I also want him to look at using the building um, with an antenna farm up there, maybe, uh, because the tower itself is, will be, you know, two hundred, three hundred thousand um, dollars. Yeah. So. He, yeah, he didn't have. He, I think he, he was talking about a hundred or eighty thousand or something for the tower. Yeah. Um, but you, you have to get up high because of problems in the zone of the topography. Yeah. What, Calvin, was you talking about a self-standing tower? Yes. Okay. Yes. You don't want guys. So how, how, how the no, he didn't want. He said you no. just got to stay away from that. How yeah, would, it would be a tripod probably. Maybe we can do like one of those wise they doing with the twenty-seven foot right now. Have you Tom seen Paul? those? No. That's that's crazy to watch. Has anybody seen that? No. No. Um, no. You know, they they took down those towers that have been there forever. I, I saw they were going to do this. <coughs> yeah. uh, I was just looking at that the other day. And, and, and yeah, they they uh, put up a single mm -hmm. single stem wise to replace them. <coughs> and uh, I was over there one day because what keeps them stable uh, laterally is once the cables are on. You should see these things moving. It's still oh, they have a cable on it. Was a the others look like an erector set. Or, you know, they're like gone. They're yeah, they did. Oh, but they're oh, gone now. So that was one low, like, it was a pretty neat town hall and shot back. Yeah. So right here would be the spot. Perfect. So we'll have to make sure we address that. Yeah. You guys would only have to. Well, the estimate part that we would carry, or you guys would carry, would just be the excavation. So we'll get a, a base from Chick, uh, because the tower guys, uh, I don't know if you've worked with any in the past, but uh, they want to design their own base and they'll install it. So um, we just have to make sure we carry the excavation there. Okay. So our part's simple. You know, their, their part's rolled into their number. Okay. Anything else? No problem. Nothing. Ben, Mark, Rob, Paul. Okay. Thank <laughs> you. Yeah, so it's not the absolute last time to make changes, but we are moving towards um, getting our estimate. So um, that'll tell us a lot more. Um, I did bring. This is um, from Compass. Put this together, and I I told Andy I'd print out some. And uh, put it together. So this was an updated schedule from Compass, and what I did was I, I kind of blended it with the schedule I had. Um, so the really everything is the same if you look at both these schedules up until um, Dan Carey. If you look at his, uh, he had the town meeting in September, and I don't know if something changed or, but I thought we were looking at a special town meeting in April, so I wanted to confirm that. That's really the only difference between these two schedules here. Um, so it's a difference between going to the town with a DD estimate and an actual construction bid. Correct. And that, that's a choice that would have to be made. Yeah. So. You, what we what we had been talking about before, if you look at my schedule, would be um, you know getting the estimate completed mid March, um, having an updated budget by the end of March, and then a presentation to FinCom, BOS, um, end of March, early April, um, and then doing the special town meeting, you know, in April, probably towards the end of the April. Uh, if you go the way that CGA is presented here, uh, they would continue through. And actually have bids in hand, and we would go to town meeting with a, a solid number from a contractor rather than a DD estimated. That's and, and I've seen it done both ways. Uh, you know, Compass has done it both ways. It's, it's more of the town's appetite for um, because it's not funded. You know, do you want CGA to go all the way through the design? You know, spend the money on the design. Um, and it, it could get voted down, um, where you go to them early with a DD design um, and you know, 
see what really the appetite is there. So we, we thought we'd present it in kind of two different ways. How far off do they tend to be from each other? What do you mean, the two estimates? Do you have the, you're talking about the, the, you're talking about two, potentially two different numbers. Oh, well, yeah, I mean, one would be an estimate and one would be an actual right. bid from a contractor. But if it's, we would hope that they'd be, you know, within 5% of each right. other. And, and I would probably still be carrying a 10% contingency with the DD. Exactly. So you'd be, you'd hope it'd be within the 10% contingency. Right. So you could be looking at a lower number if you waited for the second cost number. It could be, yeah. yeah. Do you think we have enough time to, s to show the community to go to a special town meeting by April? I mean, that's only a Yeah, that's a, that's that's a, that's a, that's a good point. Yeah. That's not, yeah. is that enough time for outreach? Away. And that's why I kind of been pushing that we have to get the word out because mm -hmm. if we don't, then people are going to go to town meeting and they're not even going to know what we're talking about. Also, April is before town meeting, which that doesn't bother me. Um, I don't know. September, I feel like we will be on more solid ground, get everything out of the way at the town meeting. I don't know, there's two ways to look at it. Yeah, September time, Andy, that's, that month and a half ish is because of just the bid process. Yeah. Yeah. If bid, this, you would, you would, minimum would be six weeks typically on a project like this for the bid process. I mean, I think we want it to go, the longer we wait, the different the construction bids may come in, right? I mean, if it fluctuates, we might. Sure. I mean, it is it is <coughs> trying to predict the market. You know, it, it, it does change there. If we go in September and we get approved in September, when would construction stop? You're going to be starting construction in the winter season, or would construction hold off? You do site prep in the fall and then hold off until the, the construction season restarts in September, I mean, that's in the spring, in March. They'd probably want to start, if, if, they, if, if it was voted to approve in September, they'd want to start, you know, October. And if we went the other route, only had an estimate in April, or May, because April is quick. Or May, yeah. Um, we'd still have to finish going through that, going to the process of CDs getting after afterwards, mm -hmm. and then depending on how much that and number, they still the bid. If it's still higher, we still have to go back to town meeting. Yeah, but yeah. If, to town meeting. if it's lower, then we could. Time wise, is it, is it changing that much? No, it it keeps your construction start the same exact, it's pretty much the same window. Yeah. Then I think that we need to decide when we when we all think we have a better shot of making it past that town meeting. Well, I think April is too premature. Okay. Um, yeah, I agree. To try to, I mean, we're, we're, we're putting together information and photographs, etc. But we need to develop a central location. We need to direct people to that location. We need as many opportunities as possible to share information. And I think compressing that between now and April is too short. Of My other fear is the closer we get to town meeting, we're going to be spending money at town meeting right. for. Mm. You know, it, I'd rather have it separate a little bit so it's I, its I, own, uh, own, own entity. People can concentrate just on that, not how much all the other departments are looking for at town meeting, and then try to lump this into it and say, oh, look at the size of the budget this year. And then if we have a good fall town meeting, we can also put money back into capital stabilization and put towards a police station, which would be even lower when we go for a debt of solution. Right. When's spring town meeting? June. First, June, first, first Monday. In June. Yeah, first Monday in June. And fall is usually second week of October ish. 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 Yeah, but you'd already. But we wouldn't want to do it then. We'd probably yeah. want to do it in September yes. or. Or. And I think it would be a be better ready. sell if we had a harder number. So Real we had number. To, Right. Yeah. That's what I would think. A firm number people can actually grasp as opposed to yeah. saying, gee, it might jump who knows where. In my years in this town, they haven't liked the vagaries of, exactly. of numbers. And I think yeah. you and I had talked about that the last time. Right. We can't go with a what if. We have right. to really go with this is the number that we're going to carry. We could start showing this building. Yeah, no. Yeah, the design for people because it's in, I, I don't go on Facebook, so I don't know if you guys get stuff on Facebook yet about design, but most people don't even have a clue. 
I see you trolling on Facebook all the time. I know. So where, where is all of this information going to be available? It'd be nice if they had their own website that was dedicated to this. Maybe a, a sub substation of, of the Freetown Police Department's web website or something. But it's only <coughs> or a page from your I think website, a page. Yeah. I think you need to link to a page. I don't think having You're talking about a Facebook page. I, I meant okay, like on the on the web police department's right. website. You know, you click this link and you go. Our website is pretty generic. Yeah, we can't. I don't think we can do that with the, uh, the way it was built and et cetera. It's what about the town's website? The town's website yeah. is being developed right now. It looks yeah. really yeah. good. Yeah. Town's website, yeah. We could point everybody to a particular location on the town mm -hmm. website, which then could have its own page or whatever it is. Right? Yeah, I like to have a button on all the websites. Even on Facebook, that links to that. So anybody can push a button. Yeah. Facebook, up, uh, link. It says push here. <laughs> Has a picture of the all the same. <laughs> Has a picture of the police. Push the button. Yeah. Hit the head. Uh, so I think once we get the numbers in for the DD estimate, I mean, we can actually put the front end of kind of what I'm thinking of advertisement together. You know, some pictures and facts about current station, um, you know, then CGA's design, um, and then lastly, everybody wants to see, you know, what's it going to cost. Um, so, we, you know, then we typically see the budget and then any effect to the tax rate if there is any. I, yeah, I, I think we need to keep it that simple. Yeah. You know, not a million pages in data, you know, pictures of the existing conditions and true defects, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, Information, these kind of pictures and layout, cost and estimates, and I don't know, maybe um, a link if people have questions, etc. They can be free to ask, and somebody, one of us will respond. Yeah, and, and then once we have, I think, a, like I said, a, a DD estimate and all that in that material in one place, then we can start to have information sessions and you know a form here or there. And, Agree. I think that we use the uh, finance committee, and um, Thank you. you're welcome. <laughs> and the um, the previous the building committee, not the police station yep. subcommittee, as a test group okay. to see. I think we do a presentation for them, and I think we see where their questions stem. So I, I can tell you, and we've discussed this before, that uh, a few people have asked me about this project, and you know they've heard different rumors in the mm -hmm. community. And one of the questions is, why is our project so much higher than Lakeville and this and that? You know, and I don't know what the, our number is, but I, I do tell them the last information I had were about $450 uh, square foot, which is cheaper than average. So, so it's cheaper that way. The impediment we have is the terrain, mm -hmm. and those are the costs that have, have you know, you have no control over that part. The you know. terrain and the well yeah. and the So I think, and we can, we've got a, we'll, we'll, we'll put that together too. We can yeah. put a comparison even, you know, we have all the information on Lakeville. So even right next door, we can put that comparison together. But, you know, the, the thing that, um, you know, you have to be careful about is what number do they have in their head? Do they have the all-in number? Do they have the site yeah. cost number? Do right. they have the, you know, so we have to be talking, um, you know, apples to apples. That's and it's dangerous when people come in and grab the paperwork well, and take it home with yeah. them because that's not really the paperwork, right? <laughs> right. I mean, it's, you know, we've all been here. It changes every single week. So every week we get an update of what the paperwork really is. So for somebody to scurry and take something and, and like live with that number is totally wrong. So I think that once we know what we're doing, we do have that test yeah. group and get the and right it, and information. And it's wrong and they're telling other people right. they're wrong. So then you have to go backwards and start... I think what you, I think one of the things that you gotta consider is when you start calling the community, you gotta be. We have to have a pretty firm number on what it's gonna cost. We have to have a firm number on what the capital stabilization is gonna put in, and we gotta have a firm number per thousand of what the impact is gonna be. Mm -hmm. So any taxpayer can say, well, my house is valued at three hundred thousand. Right. I know what it's going to cost you. Right. Because yeah. if you don't do it that way, and you start having people come into a special town meeting about this here, and 
people start throwing out numbers that have no exactly. factual information. Yeah, I think that's if, absolutely right. Yeah, if you go yeah. to the people and you say, listen, if your house is valued at 300000 it's going to cost you so much per thousand. Just multiply it. Yep. Yeah. And then they got the answer. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Because this stuff, I mean, people are talking they, on a lot of things. When they talk about the schools, a lot of things. They don't have the right information. Right. That, that one number, that's, 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 that's the, the big number. number for that is the yeah, big yeah, number. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I don't think we should wait, though, until we have those numbers before we start at least showing the oh. deficits of the current police station and some of the issues that we need to address now. Right. Yeah. True. We don't need to wait until we have estimates all the way down wherever this Mid-March. No, yeah, you can put something together now. Yeah, the sooner we get stuff out in front of people and saying, you know, we're having problems with this station, we need to do something, Almost I agree with want you. To have a new My problem is at the final. When we start oh, the absolutely, I know what you meant. Yeah, yeah. But I don't want to wait until we put all the information well, we out there at one time. I want to stop. What we have. Yeah, because then people will want it. They'll be like, right. oh my God, we need, to do something. Need, we, need, we need that. So we have to build the want and the desire to build the police station and then, then almost like you reel them into, into the project. <clears throat> I'll be honest, a couple of years ago when I first came on, I didn't realize how bad the police station situation was because I'm on the outside. I never went to the police station. But when we started dealing with it and we had the breakdowns and we started to spend money on heating systems and we're just patching the stuff, we're not fixing it. Yeah, yeah. And we're still having the same problems, it's just not, water's not running up, the thing's not freezing up. We haven't fixed anything, we just patched things. It's so not even adequate. Nobody knows no, that until we get it out there. You, you can't go in behind the scenes of the police station unless... Normally you don't. In that time you're not really paying attention, you're, you're more going to prison, so... <laughs> yeah. But then we have people like... You don't see what it's like. But then we have people like Taylor, right, who have... <coughs> <coughs> and seen other police stations and comes into ours and like, like, for real? This is what you have? Like, yeah. really? Not on the trail. <coughs> we're, we're pretty close. I, and what we, I think what we should do too is, um, with this, I'm thinking it's a PowerPoint. I don't know if we decided on something, but with the pictures of... Well, he, yeah, I, I mean, he, he's pretty uh, tech savvy, so we can have a PowerPoint or he could have a sort of a video. You yeah. Know, walking you through this stuff. So I'm... Along with that, though, I think part of um, what would help, you know, the people in the town is, you know, they're kind of just guessing at what this group has been doing. If we gave a timeline, okay, um, Palmer Associates was hired here, um, CGA was hired here, CGA mm -hmm. completed the needs assessment here, um, you know, uh, schematic design was completed here, we did an estimate, you know, that sort of thing. You give a whole timeline of kind of what's been going on to mm -hmm. this point. Even before you came on board, yeah. I mean, we had we had the building committee. Mm -hmm. yep. Then we all decided as a, right. We had the feasibility study. Then mm -hmm. we had the building committee. Then we all decided what in what order do we want to see these projects? And the police station was first because it was so. All right. The most so dire so who's who's going to construct the uh, the site where all of this stuff goes? Who do we task with that? I don't think we could do the website. <laughs> yeah. The website. Is, in terms of the structure of the website, that's not a big deal. It's the content. Right. Having material to put content. on to, you know, building, yeah, adding pages yeah. onto websites. Right. So we'll Relative deliver some percent. content with respect to either photos or, and or photos. narrative, narrative, video. And we need somebody to put together the timeline. Yep, I can work on the timeline. We can yep. put that up there. Mm -hmm. If everybody funnels everything to me, I can even put together a draft PowerPoint. We can, it's a place to start, you know? I can get any content on the Pose, yeah, and I can help out with the existing, on, you know, what to look at. The other thing, uh, all right. issues. Are we doing uh, this on cable? Or are we going on? Uh, we have a local TV YouTube guy. with this also. Oh, we like, should Lake, probably go like on Lake YouTube. Lake we haven't been in the past. I know uh, Slick and well, Dean's on, but I don't could, know about the. We could do something to put on. Anyways, some of the towns I work in have a have a guy who's either full time or part time. For Allie right now, he's little. Does all the videos for the local TV, and usually he. The video thing is, to me is a good idea of the old police station, a walkthrough with a narrative yeah. Yeah. that yeah. we can have, you know, MP4 or whatever the hell the format is, people can uh -huh. click on it and they can actually see this stuff. Yeah, yeah the yeah. MP4, well, there's actually... Like no good. Yeah, can we, can we do the panoramic? Yeah. You know, like when you walk yeah, in. I actually, if you get access I know that's, what they, that's, yeah. a, that's a current version. 
Don't give me that. <laughs> Isn't that a type of gun? It's an eight track. I like an empty eight track. I don't think that we should tie our hands on just on Google or just no. on YouTube. I think that we have to Much hit all the outlets. But so. to, to, to Paul's point, if we had a video that went through, and then after the video, you can actually click on because you'd look at you just look at everything. But then you can click on different sections. You know, here's the, the heating system. Here's, here's the different things that the point oh. You know, so, the cracks in the wall. So what I'm hoping for is we can have some kind of packet together with photos, etc., that are available at some of these town meetings as well before. Well, and, exactly, you know, because the perfect time for this would be at our at our June town meeting. Yeah, if we could so. get something out there <clears throat> other than just a rendering or maybe like I don't know, a handout that we could hand out to say like, you know, go to this site and look up these right. things. Something really easy um, to point them in the direction. I think that that would help too. And as we do our sales promotion to the finance committee and, and our, our initial group, why don't we have a meeting at the officers' room over there, <laughs> and then take them for a tour and see the inside of our station as we work in it? I, I also think open houses, a couple open houses, would be a good idea. Some people don't have access to computers, like Paul. Some people just want to walk through. Sorry, they just want to walk through a, um, and see, and I think it's a good idea. Yeah, you could have like an information night, and you could have it here, they could stop there, and then you could give a presentation in here to follow. People like just to see the behind the scenes type stuff anyhow, especially they'll bring the kids to see what the, what a police station looks like inside. The fire station, we see oh, tours okay. in the fire station for the, for the kids all the time. You know, the the teacher would bring the whole class, and they get see, but they'd go up, get go upstairs and see where you know the, the living quarters were and stuff, not just the apparatus. Right. Um, and so, it's not a bad thing. You look at the turnout we get for the historical society, just walk through the historical society and stuff. If you advertise it, people would come and see it. Yeah. Something I found very effective too is that you put large physical signs in maybe three locations in the town. One that comes to mind is you know the the, the park with the gazebo maybe you know, towards the rotary, and then you have a sub sign on it that changes, like um, visit whatever for more information, and then uh, vote on such and such a date when you get that far along. And, you know, the big sign so that every, these points that everybody drives by, they see it, and it gets a word out that no, everybody yeah. wants. We, we also have a sign by law. We have to go for <laughs> so a planning board and get a yeah. variance so we can put up a blinking light sign. No blinking light sign. <laughs> uh -oh. um, Larry Ash will come back and <laughs> And the technology on those things has come so far, even since I started. They're all banned. You can just get a real nice. I'm not getting the banned. No, we don't. Yeah, we have a sign by law. We can't have signs. Or we can't have illuminated signs. So yeah. Even for temporary signs? Oh, especially temporary signs. Yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> Unless it's a political sign, for some reason they get to stay up. See, when he ran for Slickman, he was going to have these blinking signs, <laughs> yeah. Barry Powell, but then he found out that the planning board had this uh, bylaw. Actually, the, the planning board submitted to the to Slickman a sign bylaw before I was a Slickman and it also, shot down we, in flames. We have, um, isn't it opening day soon over right here? At baseball? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Are we I'm, not, I'm not the president anymore. But, no. But uh, it would be. Um, in April. No, but it, even if we had a flyer or, you know... It usually like, comes around April vacation school. You know, and put it up near the um, food. Near the state. Yeah, yeah, for people to see. Maybe we could put on Old Little Fenway. Oh, nice time. There you go. <laughs> but the best spot is on the back of the bleaches of Little Fenway. Because you see it when you're walking in and you can see it from the parking lot. Right from the street. But, uh, Maybe the police association can make a small donation to the FYAA put a billboard back there. We just have to change the one we do every year. Yeah, they made that. Just change yeah. it. Yeah, yeah just donations. but make make it like we need your help or you know we need speaking of help there was, that, there was that time we painted the cruises. Uh, yeah. For nothing. <laughs> yes, you did that. <laughs> What's up Carlton? Speaking of help. How yes. about um, uh, Amazon and Stop and Shop? Amazon who? That's what I hear. Mm -hmm. What about? Um, I mean, is it possible they may donate some money toward this at all? Or? I mean, you can ask. I think they they like to donate to not not to make a big sum of money donations, but to donate a little bit everywhere. 
We've had a lot of stop and shops donate yeah. a lot for, for different things. Um, Cape Cod aggregates donate a lot of different mm -hmm. things. Amazon. So what else are we doing tonight? <laughs> I haven't asked them for anything though. I don't well, know. We sell the naming rights to Alley Station. station. Yeah. Yeah. Amazon's I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I don't no, know. When we did that tour a while back, they talked about yeah, what they donated to Fall River and stuff, and Alley contacted me to see if there was anything yeah. available for donations for free. <laughs> <laughs> I would have no problem. Track somebody down. Yeah, exactly. People are trying to find somebody too. She had a, a contact number. Contact them from Washington, D.C. I'll find out. I'll get the I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm just thinking if yeah. if you scored 50 or 100K, I mean, that may be dreaming, but. I worked for a large company in Rhode Island that bought the fire department a fire truck when they expanded. Yeah, see, they would buy. They would, CGA? They might buy you a cell CGA? tower. Or, yeah. but, they wouldn't, uh, but they wouldn't, but they wouldn't, here's like a hundred thousand dollars for your police station. I don't think they would do that, yeah. but they would buy, yeah. they would buy Great. a no. cell tower or, you know, something oh. that they can say was donated by yeah. their well, company. The cell tower would be a, a great one. Yeah. 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 did when they came in the seventies. They brought it, they did a, they bought a fire truck and donated a fire truck and stuff. So who, res who responds to Amazon? Say there was a fire. Okay, so the office area is on the Fall River side. So 911 would pick that up and transfer it to Fall River. In theory, Fall River should call Freetown to respond as well. I don't know what the plans are, the response plans. Right. Um, but when they were putting the radio system inside the facility, I was very um, vocal about including Freetown Fire and police radios as well because obviously we could be in the facility. Also working on uh, getting Fall River to accept us uh, to be able to talk on their frequency because what possibly could be could happen, let's say we had an active shooter in the building, we need to be on the same frequency. So, I mean, Right now, it's just Fall River and Freetown. So what would likely happen is we'd all switch over to Fall River because they don't have the ability to switch to ours. And we would operate and be able to communicate effectively. Um, but to answer your question, uh, the initial 911 calls would go to Fall River. Um, if it's a police call, non-emergency, they respond and they realize that, you know, it should be Freetown, <laughs> you know, they figured the line out, they, they, would, they, would, they would certainly call us, you know. But generally, I'm thinking, have we had any calls other than complaints about trucks in the road and stuff? I think we actually have, but nothing, no, nothing, nice nice. nothing like stop and shop. No, that's all other thing. Do you ever put any radio system in there for sort of portables to talk back to our station? In uh, Amazon, yes. Yeah, they did. Stop and Shop included on the new addition to Stop and Shop and not throughout the entire facility. Okay. We also have an intermediate school agreement with Fall River, so I mean, that's pretty much spelled out in our intermediate school agreement. So. Didn't we have a problem contacting them a while back with a school nurse or yeah. something that needed to get, yeah, yeah. Good night. get in touch with a uh, parent or something there? Or like, you ended up sending a cruise up? Oh, it is. Could be. I was going to tell you that. I haven't gotten that yet. Oh. Okay. But we put a lot of the We are. 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 For the water line? Oh, I don't know. I'll take it both. We'll have to circle back on it. The water line? That's the only thing that they're waiting for. You got my other way for it. They have some numbers that they were looking for you guys to provide. Yeah, so um, I believe I forwarded that to you. Um, to you? Who? Oh, we did close that loop. Okay. I, I know uh, we got them. All right, then like let me circle flow. back with him tomorrow yeah, and yeah. find out. Yeah. Perfect. All right. So just so you know, um, last night we voted to put the water line on for the special town meeting coming up in March. Which week for the number? Yeah, I, I saw the article, but yeah, there was no number to it. Mm -hmm. um, and it also talked about borrow and or 
well, the stabilization and or yeah. something else too. So, to raise the so for estimating purposes, you're carrying wells. Yes. Well, we'll know in a couple of weeks. No pun intended. All right. So, so did we? It sounded to me like obviously April's off um, the table, um, but did I hear that bringing it to spring town meeting in June was, or are we looking to bring a hard number, the construction number in September? Construction yeah, number. I think construction number. Number. Okay. Right you want that as a motion? Yeah. I'll make a motion that we wait until we have a hard construction number. Second. From the town. All in favor? All right. You just have to let me know what that means for you. Uh, yeah, I'll look at our yeah. contract. I don't know if it changes much, but okay, let's make sure. Yeah. Um, Probably isn't the budget to do that. Right? We're not going to be over. Well, I don't know. That's why I asked him to look at that. What about Andy's? I have to look at that too. No, I think uh, I think that's how we planned it. You're, oh, you yeah, did plan it that way, but I want to make sure that all our current invoices open are all right because Kim will be all over me. Yeah. I, I know CGAs, we had, you guys gave a full um, proposal, yes. of, you know, um, lump sum fee, but I think you're right, I think ours might only be to a certain point, mm -hmm. and we just have to might do the now give you the second part of that proposal right. that puts it through the construction. That's right. I'll check that. All right. That was everything I had. I wanted to make sure we're, so, and for the um, PowerPoint, if the police want to funnel me pictures, we'll send it to you. videos, yes. send it to me. I'll work with Andy and we'll start putting something together. We'll work on a timeline. We'll put something together that we can at least get out on the airwaves and start circulating. Yeah. All right. Sounds good. Yeah. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? All right.